Welcome to our poster on how to use Oxview to create free from DNA nanostructures online. Uh, I'm going to show you how to create this tetrahedron uh, in this video, uh, but also just join us on a poster session to, to see how uh, all the different features can be used. Basically, to start with, let's load some kind of background image as a reference. So I prepared this uh, tetrahedron shape here. It's from um, the Turbofill Lab in 2005. Uh, you can see that there's a 20 base pair edge on each side. And therefore, we will start by creating a 20 base pair helix. We can input the correct sequence if we want to, uh, but it's easier to set a sequence afterwards. So just let's create one uh, like this. And then we can um, copy and paste. Uh, control C, Control V, select everything with Control A, um, and rotate. But everything like this, you can just use copy paste and um, things like this here. Uh, R is rotate, but you can find it there. Okay, uh, then we can go to view and apply uh, centering so that we get everything a little bit more in the middle. If we go to select and select monomers instead, uh, we will not select the whole thing but instead just one uh, single nucleotide. Uh, disable this translation, which is on here, uh, and then you just select two and two together on the strand ends and ligate them together. Uh, this is a bit tedious, but get there in the end, we'll just have to go through all of them. Okay, so now everything is connected. Uh, if we go to view and then uh, view by cluster, you can see that every nucleotide is its own cluster. Uh, we can actually change the color palette so that we have two more colors, so that there's one color per um, per helix, uh, something like this. Looks good. And then uh, everything is still in one plane, as you can see. Um, we want it to be a tetrahedron. Uh, but ev since everything is its own cluster, we can just enable rigid body dynamics, which will move the clusters so that they um, basically have a repulsion force in between them, um, but also one force uh, linearly moving, uh, like a spring relaxation force in between uh, these points that go across the clusters. So it automatically goes into uh, something looking more like a tetrahedron. Let's change some constants. The repulsion can be a bit lower, and the spring constant can be a bit higher. Uh, and that moves the things a little bit more together. Let's set the relaxed length to a bit shorter. Uh, and then you have your uh, nice tetrahedron structure. We can turn off the dynamics. Uh, if you want to, we can also make some edits uh, here. If I want to add these one nucleotide hinges, maybe a T. Um, at this point, let's just insert that there, uh, and then click and insert. Uh, you can also skip uh, certain ones if you don't want to have them there, um, but I'm not going to do the whole thing now. Instead, uh, I have this Oxserve set up here, uh, which is a collab network where you can get a free NVIDIA GPU from uh, from Google. Uh, so you can connect to that and use it to relax your structure. You can also host your own. Basically, just use Oxserve Connect as uh, local host or to this collab notebook, or in the future, quite soon, hopefully, there will be a um, official one you can connect to um, to use without any setup as well. And then uh, I can just start the dynamics uh, and see how they move over time. Um, so now everything is relaxed together a bit. Um, if I realize I want to have the, these hinges here, uh, or not, not hinges, but have a uh, you see there's a small nick there, so I can add a nick to see how it moves with the nick there, and just continue simulating. Um, if I wanted to add some forces, uh, maybe have from all the base pairs, uh, so that they are pulled together, then I can just create from base pairs, and we have all these trap forces, as you can see here. Um, and if I just restart the, um, the simulation, it will take that into account, which is very nice. Uh, I can also stop and use GPU simulation, um, since I have these three GPUs from Google connected, and then it will go a bit faster. Um, so that's all for us. If you have any questions or are just interested in how you can use Oxview for your research, uh, feel free to come to our poster and, um, and have a talk. Thank you very much.